this, this mass of historians and uh, museums ever. Um, brought together tour, tourism ex experts, historians, and local leaders from each of the state's 10 regions to help put together an action plan tailored to their specific region to promote their area's unique history. We had an exciting, inspiring morning, a great tour of the Capitol. Uh, people got to see parts of the Capitol they'd never seen before, including their office. <laughs> Was it neat, my office? It's terrific, yeah. <laughs> we didn't peek into the press office, we stayed on um, We had a great presentation by Kenneth T. Jackson uh, called uh, America Begins in New York. Uh, it was uh, uh, just a powerful uh, speech. Um, Hol uh, Harold Halter gave us a great, great um, presentation about Lincoln in New York. Uh, <laughs> uh, to the gathered masses. Um, so I'd like to introduce a uh, few people are going to go around and have others uh, introduce themselves. First of all, Harold uh, and I were really thrilled and honored, Governor, that you, you um, called on us to, to pull together this group. In a way, it's easy to do. We have tremendous assets in this state in terms of history. Um, but the first group that we turned to was a group of historians, uh, Dr. Thomas Chambers, uh, Associate Professor at Niagara University. Dr. Robert Harris, Professor of African American History and American Studies, Cornell. Uh, Dr. Kenneth T. Jackson, uh, uh, the Director of the Herbert Greenman Center for the Study of American History, and the Jacques Rosen Professor of History at the Social Sciences at Columbia University. Dr. Lisa Keller, uh, Professor of History at Purchase College. And Robert Weibel, the State Historian and Chief Curator of the New York State Museum. Uh, not with us today, but who's been advising us, as well as Ambassador William Van Den Heuvel, uh, who we kept on the loop with all we're doing. We have work groups who've been working out in the 10 regions across the state, pulling together people in advance of this meeting. I wonder if we could go around the table and have them introduce themselves. Okay. I'm Jonathan Isaac, the Executive Director of the Art Services Initiative of Western New York, and I was co-chair of the Western Region. I'm Victoria Daly. I'm representing the Finger Lakes region. I am the mayor of the village of Palmyra in Wayne County, a uh, member of the uh, Erie Canal Way National Heritage Corridor Commission and uh, the past president of Canal New York. I'm Bruce Mosley. I'm representing Central New York, and I'm currently at Colgate University, formerly at the number of historic sites in Erie. I'm Jim Hare, representing the Southern Tier, and I'm a former mayor of Elmira, a former American history teacher who uh, laments the uh, passage of teaching of history, as uh, Dr. Jackson mentioned this morning. Bruce Pierpont, Deputy Commissioner for Historic Preservation, Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. I'm Laurie Solomon, and I'm the Erie Canal and National Heritage Corridor, and I'm representing the Mohawk Valley. I'm Andy Beard, the Executive Deputy Commissioner of New York State Parks. I'm Gary DeYoung, representing the North Country. I'm a director of tourism of the South Island's Tourism Council and co-chair of the Tourism Working Group for the North Country Region of the Economic Development Council. Good afternoon, Sharon Dolores. I'm the president of the Community Foundation for the Greater Capital Region and co-chair of the Capital Regional Work Group. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Lynch, the chief historian of the Capital Region and co-chair of the Capital Regional Work Group. Good afternoon, Governor. Mark Castiglione. I'm representing the Mid-Hudson Valley Region and I'm also the acting director of the Hudson River Valley National Heritage Area. Holly Kane. I'm co-chair of the New York City Region. I'm a consultant and um, and also have uh, founded and run the Lower East Side Conservancy, which is a combination of heritage tourism and historic preservation, started in 1998. Nancy Milius, I'm representing uh, the region of Long Island, and I am the director of marketing at Ohika Castle and the founder of Gold Coast Mansions Historic Long Island. I'm Rose Hardy, and I'm Commissioner of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. I'm Brian Stratton, the d Director of the New York State New York State Canal Corp, which oversees our state's canals, including the world-famous Erie Canal. Thank you. Um, what a great group. And, and um, without the vision and leadership of Governor Cuomo, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, and we really know of no other state taking this kind of initiative. Uh, we talked this morning um, at, at the large, the first group that on day one, 
governor issued this executive order to remove the barriers to state government and in fact open the Hall of Governors. If you, if you visit our museum, we, we put 32 9-11 ex exhibitions across the state, changing exhibits, activating the Capitol as a museum in itself. And it's, it was, it's had great resonance across the state. And uh, this is sort of a great next step we see from all of that. So on behalf of everyone gathered today, uh, thank you. Um, I'd now like to introduce Howard Glacier, the Governor's Director of State Operations. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Governor, your charge to us for the Path of History initiative was actually pretty simple, to highlight the state's rich history while boosting tourism uh, and economic development throughout the state. Heritage tourism, as it's sometimes called, is uh, it's a significant economic driver in New York State. Five billion dollar industry, and it's growing. The average heritage tourist stays longer and spends more money in New York. So we like that, we want to see more of that. A heritage and cultural tourism is the second most cited reason that people visit New York State. Well, with the groups that you just uh, heard uh, about, uh, we, we put together uh, these regional work groups, the regional work groups consisting of historians locally and also uh, state, our state historians, cultural site managers, tourism experts, and each of these groups has worked over the last several months to develop a vision statement and a manifest of priority sites to promote. Uh, the charge of the group was to seek ways to raise the profile of New York State's unparalleled network of museums, historic sites, and other cultural institutions, and to do so by creating unique branding for the path through history, integrating that branding across different mediums, including signage, social media, and local promotional activities to describe and promote these paths through history in New York. But rather than have me explain it, let me show you a video that gives you an idea of what we've been working on. New York, the Empire State, revered for our architectural wonders, our culture, our dynasties. But if you ask most Americans where the Bill of Rights was adopted, where the women's rights movement was born, or which state had the most revolutionary war battles, New York gets lost in the conversation. So today, we're going to turn the state of the center of the world into the center of American history. Introducing Path Through History, an evolving online and mobile experience that puts you at the center of New York history. On the website, an interactive map brings over 700 historic locations to life with vibrant photography, historical links, tips, and community suggestions. Category filters help anyone narrow down their ideal path and our recommendation engine unlocks places of interest that can help make your path more relevant and rewarding. Along the way, clear new signage located throughout the state makes it easy to find exactly what you're looking for. But the best way to experience history is to be guided through it. The Path Through History mobile app is part navigator, part historian, part travel companion. It makes the journey more personal to each and every one of us. GPS-enabled driving directions mark the spot while archival imagery, guided audio tours, and exclusive insights delivered by New York historians make the true meaning of each site come to life. And with photos, videos, and inspiring messages that can be tagged to any site, travelers can share their experiences via social media and put their own stamp on history. With Path Through History, we can connect our past to the explorers of today. Through its vibrant new site and mobile app, visitors will learn about New York's rich heritage and how New York has defined the nations. Exciting! It's uh, you can get a sense of the energy from that video. That's a preview of the website and app work that we're doing, and that will be coming live, uh, coming on live in the in the coming uh, months. Well, as you saw in the video, new signage is a key component of the paths through history concept, and these signs are designed to take people off of the interstate highways and bring them into communities and visiting our cultural and historic sites. At the state level, there are uh, two different phases or two layers of signage that we're really introducing today for the first time. The first are iconic signs, over 200 key moments in New York State and American history placed on roadways throughout the state. We've selected these with the assistance of our historians and our local work groups. You can see it's themed with a new Path Through History logo, and these will go actually in between the exits. 
in a location that is associated with the particular historic event that's taking place. And I will tell you, when you look through and you understand the depth and the richness of New York history, as you've heard from, uh, from our two speakers this morning, it's, it's really quite impressive. We couldn't even fit them all on, uh, on the screen today. This is just a sampling to give you an idea. You see some of them are around the room, uh, but literally over 200 of these uh, throughout the state. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's quite, uh, quite educational. Um, these signs, uh, in addition, are each customized to a particular theme. And the themes include uh, topics such as, uh, you will see here, War of 1812, Canal history, civil rights, colonial history, et cetera, allowing tourists, visitors, and motorists to customize a tour according to their particular area of interest. Uh, but really the thing that brings it home is taking the, uh, associating the signs on the iconic moments in New York history and then corresponding them to a particular site that we want to drive traffic to. And so these are the new version of the attraction signs. You've seen signs like this, I think, at many of the exits. These go at the exits and they will pick up on the particular site associated with that iconic moment in New York history and drive the traffic into uh, the uh, into the local destination. So seeing here, for example, Skyler Mansion, and there are there will be a sign uh, for the iconic sign as well for that. So that's the overview of the path through history. Uh, the next step is really beginning a marketing plan. Improve signs on local roads to encourage visitors to visit these local sites. Continue to work on the web-based interface that you've seen, and we're also looking forward to new ideas that are generated from the region. And I know that. There was discussion this morning in the work groups about how we tie back into this marketing. We're very anxious and excited to hear uh, from, from you about the things you discussed in your work groups uh, this morning. Thank you, Mark. So, um, next we're going to see Patricia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, okay. okay. That I can do. <laughs> Thank you very much for that kind introduction, Mark. You really <laughs> you went on much too long, and you were too flattering. <laughs> Brevity is your strong suit, my friend. Um, a little abrupt, but first of all, I can't tell you how excited I am uh, about all of this. This was actually one of the first uh, ideas that we spoke about when uh, we were just taking office which was about 19 months ago. Uh, and it was something we were excited about, something we had talked about for years before that. But uh, we really started to focus on it about 19 months ago. So all of this is literally 19 months of work that just comes to fruition today. You know, like so many of these events, uh, it's, you have to appreciate all the work that went on before to get us to this point. And we had a great team working on it. I want to thank Howard Glazer, the Director of State Operations, who, who took this uh, personally and uh, has really done great, great work with it. Mark Shami, who doesn't really give the best introduction, but at what he does, uh, he is really exceptional. And uh, he's been a great partner to us with the museum. We've done a lot of interesting work uh, that has gone on besides this project. And the answer is always yes. Uh, and he's, he always finds a creative way to do it, so I want to thank him. And Harold Holzer, who you heard from, who's one of the nation's treasures when it comes to history, especially Lincoln. Uh, and Harold and I go way back to the other Cuomo, actually. Uh, Harold worked for my father, uh, so there's a lot of history just between Harold and myself when we're here. We go back uh, to the 80s when we started in this capital, at a, when we both looked uh, much, much different. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. How about that, Harold? Thank you. <laughs> but it's a special treat to have Harold here because uh, he, he really is. Uh, we're proud to have him as a New Yorker. Uh, this, as you heard, and I, I want to get to the working groups and, and hear your thoughts, but uh, the path through history was first about the path, first about identifying 200 or so of the poignant places, events that tell the story of New York's history, in many cases, American history. And we had all sorts of discussions, should we have 500 places, 100 places? We came up with about 200 places because we think that's, that's what it, it takes to tell the story. 
Um, and it's a powerful story. It's a story that will also be told by region. Why? A lot of the work we do here is about and through the regions of the state. Uh, the, the regional nature of New York, in my opinion, has never been given the right attention uh, or the right respect. We are one state, but we are 10 or so really different, beautiful regions in and of themselves. And if you look at the way our economy works, the way our politics work, the way history happened, it happened by regions. And there are distinct regions. And let's understand them and let's, let's capitalize on them. You know, for many years it was New York City and then sort of everywhere else in the state. No, it's a beautiful texture to the state and there's a context to the state. And we want to highlight that. So when we're telling the history, once again, we tell it through the regions. Uh, why do this? Well, first, uh, as Howard mentioned, um, a big focus here is driving the state's economy and tourism is a major economic engine for this state. One of in the, in the top three of economic generators is tourism. And we can do a better job in tourism. Much of the tourism is generated through heritage trips, history trips, etc. And we have much more history and heritage here than people know, or people are aware of. We haven't marketed it properly, and I believe we have more potential from an economic point of view, in terms of tourism, if we tell this story. I was with some friends a couple of weeks ago who said they did, they're going to the mid-Atlantic states uh, to look at uh, Revolutionary War sites. I said, you know, why? We have one third of all the Revolutionary War sites right here in New York State. Uh, someone was talking about the Plymouth, going to see Plymouth Rock and talking about that experience. You know. We had Henry Hudson who was here a decade before they found Plymouth Rock, you know. So I don't think we have told our story. I think when we tell our story and present our story, more people are going to want to come and hear it and see it, and that's going to be great for the economy, and that's great. And that justifies government's involvement uh, because so much of what we do has to be justified on the bottom line by the dollars and cents. So it's a, an investment for the state in tourism. That's reason number one. Reason number two is history for the sake of history, period. Why? Because history is important. Because before you can know where you're going, you need to know where you've been. Before you can know the world, you need to know yourself. I have Miss Cara and Miss Michaela in the front row, two of my three at this point they're saying, oh, I can't believe, here goes dad again. That's what they're saying. <laughs> and girls, you happen to be right in this case. In my opinion, we have degraded history in this country. Uh, we've degraded the study of history. We've degraded the importance of history. In some ways, we're so current now, and information is so current, and the moment is so relevant that in that process we have lost appreciation for what has come before because we're so into with the technology and the flow of information what's happening at this moment. So history for the sake of history. And this state has a special history. And this state has a special role in this country. We are not just another state. Great things are expected from the state of New York. Why? Because we've done great things. Leadership is expected from the state of New York. Why? Because we have been leaders in the past. You look at all the great progressive movements. They were birthed here. Women's rights movement, birthed in the state of New York, Santa Falls. Environmental movement, birthed in the state of New York, right on the Hudson River at Storm King. Workers' rights movement, birthed in the state of New York by the Triangle Factory Fire. We have started so much of what has now become history. And people look to this state for that impact. They spent eight years in Washington, traveled all across the country during those years, literally worked in every state, and almost without exception. The question was always, well, what are you doing in New York on this issue? What are you doing in New York? Why? Because that's the history of New York. That's the legacy of New York. 
the progressive capital, and not just in politics and government. Construction, design, the Verrazano Bridge, the George Washington Bridge, the aqueduct system from, from Westchester and the Mid-Hudson down to New York City, almost in every garment manufacturing, every area you pick, we have a history with a lesson behind it. And a historic lesson that will guide us going forward. Uh, and we, we haven't told that story. When you're as old as I am, you've heard that story more often, frankly. And it was uh, clear to me growing up that New York was a special place. We don't tell that story as much or as often. Uh, and it's a good one, and it's a true one, and it's one that inspires, and it's one that instructs, and one that we need to tell. They used to accuse New Yorkers of having an attitude that we were special because we were New York, or an attitude that New York is a special state. You know what? We do have an attitude that we're special, and we do believe New York is a special state because it is. That is our history, and that's going to be our future, and that's what this conference is all about. So I thank all of you very much for being here to participate. Thank you. means following the governor, so yeah, there's that. Uh, Western New York, uh, first off, Governor, thank you very much for your leadership and your action on this. Uh, the fact that, that we're seeing the results of this already is just incredible. I think that, that in too many cases, uh, we study things and then we study things some more, and, and seeing the tangible results of this is, is very inspirational. Uh, <laughs> Excellent, and applause lines. Uh, our working group was made up of historians and cultural leaders and tourism professionals from the five counties in the western region, Erie, Niagara, Chautauqua, Cattaraugus, and Allegheny counties. Our vision that we collectively crafted, Western New York was America's original tourist destination, drawing visitors from around the world to see our magnificent falls, beautiful parks, and thriving cities. Preservation of our natural wonders, numerous historic sites, and world-class cultural offerings continue to make us a premier destination for authentic heritage tourism. Our region's future success will rely on developing a more integrated experience for visitors. By making connections between the variety of historic and cultural sites, we will provide people with a unique visit which combines all of the features that make Western New York so special. You can see several themes, but uh, what I want to really concentrate on, on on this slide are a few points about the importance of this initiative to our region. Visitors contribute more than $2.2 billion to our regional economy each year already, with nearly 12 million people visiting Western New York's parks, including our leading attraction, Niagara Falls. Tourism, tourism is a priority of our Western Region Economic Development Council, and we thank them for prioritizing something like tourism and recognizing its connection and role in economic development. And the cultural sector in our region employs over 4,700 full-time equivalents. So arts and culture means business in Western New York. Tourism, culture, and heritage are key to Western New York's future in economic development, quality of life, tourism, business development, and education. So our sites. Through a ranking system, a set of sites rose to the top that represent four of the five counties in western New York, as well as hitting on all of the criteria determined by the group. And these sites fit into history in its traditional definition, and also the natural and built environment. So on the traditional historic sites, western New York has been the location of many important historical events, 
Old Fort Niagara and its role in the War of 1812, the Theodore Roosevelt inaugural site, the Michigan Street Preservation District's role in the Underground Railroad and birth of the Niagara Movement, and also in pop culture history with the Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz Center for Comedy. We want to make sure that we're recognizing that nowadays history means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Our natural and built environment, of course, starts with Niagara Falls, but it's also Wiscoy Falls, Allegheny State Park, and the Olmstead Park system. Western New York is home to marvels of the built environment. The Erie Canal Locks, Flight of Five, and Western Terminus are one of the great building projects, and we still have the authentic sites to show people, not a recreation. Our area is known for its architecture, especially the works of Frank Lloyd Wright, the Darwin Martin House and Greycliffe among them. Our Art Deco Central Terminal in Buffalo City Hall, plus two Roman Catholic basilicas in the H.H. H. Richardson Towers, rise above the skyline, and the Chautauqua Institution remains a center for religious, and cultural education in a beautiful setting. So Governor, on behalf of the committee and Western New York, once again, we commend you and thank you on your vision, and we invite everyone to experience the Western region's path through history. Thank you. Governor Cuomo, it's my pleasure to be here and to bring you greetings from Palmyra, Queen of Canal Towns. You have visited us frequently in the past. We hope you will do that, be able to do that again. Uh, we represent nine counties in the Finger Lakes region. And I'd like to begin by introducing you to a few of the many, many uh, sites and attractions that I believe will be a part of our story of history of New York State. Uh, in the upper left is the Clara Barton home in uh, Dansville, and it is significant because it was from that location, that very home, in the uh, late 19th century that Clara Barton founded the Red Cross. It was from that location that she persuaded the American government to recognize it as a valid organization and was able to obtain also international recognition, making it part of the International Red Cross. The first office of the American Red Cross is and was always in the same spot in Dansville, unique to our area. Immediately to the right of that is a marvelous statue, one of many in Seneca Falls, which has been referenced repeatedly uh, as a site that is certainly worth promoting. It is a representation of entitled uh, Katie Meets Stanton. The figure in the middle is Amelia Bloomer, who introduced the two ladies to each other uh, on the banks of the Seneca Cayuga Canal. And we know that history proceeded from there. Below that, the Memorial Day Museum in uh, Waterloo, home of the first Memorial Day celebration uh, held in 1856. And 101 years later, it became a national holiday. And the final one on the first slide is uh, specimen from the Eastman Museum, Eastman Kodak Museum, uh, International Museum of Photography in Rochester. I think the variety seen there indicates the, there we go, the, the region is the largest of the economic regions in the Finger Lakes, as I said, from, is comprised of nine counties, and uh, they extend from uh, Lake Ontario on the North Shore through the beautiful Finger Lakes region to the southern area of uh, the Finger Lakes region and the magnificent Ledgewood State Park. Within that, you will find any number of historical sites, of everything from agro-tourism, the Alesa Pond in northern Wayne County, and as I said, the International Museum of uh, Photography, but also the, what had been Margaret Woodbury Strong and the International Museum of Play, also in, in Rochester. Uh, some of the sites are identified as sites. A good bit of the history in the Finger Lakes region is actually history we live with, is part of our environment. The cobblestone homes throughout the northern part of the counties involved the uh, beautiful 19th century Victorian buildings, religious, residential, commercial, government buildings built as a result of the commerce 
um, brought to us by the uh, Erie Canal. Susan B. Anthony House also in Rochester is something that uh, should definitely be on this list. There are large, large representations, there are small ones, each one telling a very unique story. As said, the Finger Lakes region has far reaching and diverse range, and I think these slides have indicated that. Photography, the films, the waterways, the canals and the lakes, certainly. Uh, women's rights, which has been referenced repeatedly. And the military history from the Revolutionary War right through to World War II. Local, seasonal, plus the major sites are available. The themes that we identified in our working groups and then discussed further this, excuse me, this morning, certainly women's history, transportation, the canals and railroads, again, and that, that is a story in itself as to the relationship between the canals and the railroads, but that's part of our history as well. Native Americans, uh, the lower right uh, image on the slide is a Benondigan site in Victor, New York. And one of the pieces of American history that has not, in New York State history, that uh, could be better served and will be as a result of this initiative is that of Native Americans. And I heard something this morning which I had never thought of before, and that was the relationship between the formation of Benondigan and the canal, and another uh, site, which I will show you shortly in the next slide, uh, and how everything ties together. So these things are not discrete, but rather create a pattern. Technology and innovation, no question about it, uh, with Eastman Kodak and Xerox and the other companies that had been, and the history that is being made now in the Rochester area, in particular, with the uh, technology park that is part of the economic development effort. Military history from the Revolutionary War through World War II, and I can come back to that, and the natural history, the, the, uh, the beauty of the area and the geology, which is a history in itself as it develops. The upper uh, left is, is, I believe, in Benondigan, and immediately in the center is of the upper uh, level, is the uh, image of the Sampson State Park and military exhibits in the, in the immediate area. Uh, interesting to know that uh, the military base and then later the museum were named for Rear Admiral Sampson and Mr. Mr. Sampson, or Rear Admiral Sampson, actually is a product of the Finger Lakes. Born and raised in Palermo, New York, which he left at uh, 17 for his appointment to the Annapolis, to Annapolis the Naval Academy. Uh, another bit of side history is the fact that uh, he was um, on the waiting list for Annapolis and had the person who preceded him not been able to, or had he uh, not failed to attend, uh, he may have been spared, or not spared, but we would have missed uh, Admiral Sampson's part in the Spanish-American War and his role as the uh, direct, excuse me, director of Annapolis. With the Gedondigan site, the, the Sampson, George Eastman House in the upper right, the, uh, the beautiful, I did not portray this, so I'm quite tickled with the fact that the uh, lower left is uh, the Sun, uh, Sonnenberg Gardens, which now is State Park, magnificent location in Canandaigua. And uh, the last one on the right, on the bottom, on the center and the bottom, is the Holland Land Office site in Batavia, which is the fourth of the uh, land office locate, fourth building to be on that site. And this is significant because it dates back to 1797 and the uh, signing of the Big Tree Treaty where the Senecas <coughs> opened that area of uh, western New York to settlement. Uh, shortly after the uh, treaty was signed, Mr. Morse had the opportunity <coughs> to actually sell better than three billion acres to the Holland Land Company, which is where the name came, came from. And not too long after that, uh, any number, several thousand acres, were donated to New York State for completion of the Erie Canal in that area. 
and it was that series of events that impacted the location of the Seneca Indians and moved them eastward to the site which is beyond the events. So we have all sorts of things working together here. But this is what we were working on, and uh, I bring it to your attention with the thought that uh, this is a marvelous project, and the Finger Lakes region is rich with opportunities for telling the story of New York State. So thank you for the opportunity. culture of, um, of, of historical development, rural, small town, and urban settlements, and, and in the five counties of Cayuga, Cortland, Madison, Onondaga, and Oswego, in many ways we're, we, we form the center of social reform movements that have shaped our nation from the, from the abolitionist movement in Peterborough to, to, with its connections to the women's rights movement. We also had a number of communal societies, united communities being foremost. Um, and through the years, there's been a, there's been a growth and a, and a development that's often, and I think Central New York is often overlooked. I'm a transplant, I'm proud, to, but I'm proud to call myself a Central New Yorker now. And I think that there's a rich, there's a richness that's there that we can, that we can highlight. The committee identified about 76 sites uh, throughout the five counties. It was narrowed down to, um, to 15, and you can see some of them on the screen. Uh, um, from Lorenzo uh, State Historic Site to Seward House, um, the, uh, the, and, and, and later you'll see the United Community Mansion House. But the, I mean, as you see, the assets are, are the development of our small towns, but also innovation. Uh, Central New York was home to, to in addition to social related to, um, to technology, just a couple of the brand names that have come out, uh, Oneida, Smith Corona, Porter Cable, um, and Syracuse China, and all sort of sort of known names that have formed our history. Um, and as you see, the, the longer list of themes beyond that are the cultures, the settlements, expansions. Uh, it was really developed at a time when our nation was growing. You see the Harriet Tubman House, the House, the Boxing Hall of Fame, and the United Community Mansion House. So there's a richness there that sometimes is overlooked, um, but, but with this new initiative, I think we'll be able to, um, to highlight the Erie Canal Museum, the only Waylock building existing, uh, the Safe Haven uh, Museum in Oswego, uh, the Everson Museum in Port Ontario. So thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity to speak for the uh, Southern Tier. I'm actually filling in for Jerry Smith, who is our chair and is not able to be here today. And uh, I wanted to tell a story because uh, I think it relates to what uh, Mr. Jackson spoke to this morning. We were very blessed uh, in our history that Mark Twain found a girl and fell in love with her, Olivia Langdon, and came to Elmira in 1869 uh, to meet her and then marry her there. And then for 20 summers, he would come and work in a study that was provided for him by his sister-in-law. He wrote uh, Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer at that study during those summers. And uh, eventually, of course, uh, the, they passed, and he's now a permanent resident in Elmira. But uh, in, uh, in 1939, the mansion, the Langdon Mansion, that was, uh, was offered to the city to purchase, and the city chose not to do that. They took a poll in the newspaper, and the residents were against it, and so the city fathers did not purchase that mansion. It was demolished and replaced by a strip mall named Langdon Plaza. In the 1970s, one of our English teachers at the high school asked his students, who did Mark Twain marry? And the answer was, one of the Plaza girls. <laughs> uh, so it shows that history slips away from us, and uh, I know that one of the big struggles in uh, 
in Albany is mandate reform, but mandating the teaching of history is certainly one that I think everybody would support, and uh, we hope that you do that. Uh, the Southern Cheer is... <laughs> the Southern Cheer is rich in history. Uh, I uh, had an article I was going to read. Uh, you're too young to remember Arch Merrill. But Arch Merrill was the editor of the Democrat and Chronicle, and uh, for many years wrote about New York State history, actually the regional approaches. He has two books on the southern tier. He defined it a little differently than what this definition is. He had a western southern tier and an eastern southern tier. And uh, he talked about George F. Johnson, who founded an industrial democracy with Endicott Johnson in, in uh, the southern tier. He talked about Broome County being the first having the first Farm Bureau in the United States. He talked about how Joseph Smith searched for gold on the border of uh, uh, New York before he went and found his golden plates in Palmyra. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, the Sullivan and Clinton campaign, our connections to the Revolutionary War, all of those things are rich and they fit into themes that are being expressed here in this conference. I don't need to go through all of those. And in fact, our committee, I think, is a work in progress as we develop these themes and, and enrich them. A couple of points that I would like to make is that, first of all, this is an exciting initiative. And I think it is, it's designed to focus on the story and then find ways to enhance its telling. And I think that's important. We're focusing on the story. It, it, we do have a great story. And as we seek to use this history to develop tourism, I think we want to keep in mind that a visitor's experience in New York should be one of enrichment and not leave them feeling that they have been taken. So I would hope that as we develop this, that's, that the story is so important that we want it thoroughly told in an educational way. Again, my experience is uh, to a great degree with Mark Twain in Elmira, but uh, we formed a Mark Twain Society many years ago, and one of our gentlemen got up and talked about all the things we would do with the Twain plot in the cemetery. Jervis Langdon, the grandnephew of Mark Twain, who has since passed, immediately let everybody know that uh, there wasn't going to be any cheap tourism at the Langdon plot in the cemetery. That was going to be an experience that people could share and walk away with feeling better. And his widow still does greet students at the uh, cemetery. And recently she gave a talk. She's 90 now. And uh, one of the students afterwards asked if he could touch her. And uh, <laughs> she said yes. And then he touched her. And then he turned to the class and said, I touched history. And it made his day. Um, we in the Southern Tier believe that investment should be made toward using current technology, as, being, as outlined by Mr. Glazer, to catalog and highlight sites of historic significance. Mobile, friendly technology is of specific interest. It could link GPS, wayfinding, driving directions with rich media, and you mentioned an app, that's great. Perhaps a platform could be constructed around the themes or channels relating to historical periods or topics. It would be important to have the ability for communities to quickly add and maintain information. A balance could be developed for those historical experiences or sites that can serve as gateways or hubs and provide a mechanism for travelers to visit sites that don't have the capacity to, for interpreted experiences. And uh, two ideas for marketing, which may well be on the plate, it sounds like there's been a lot of thinking going on, might be assistance in developing cell smartphone tours that detect a user's location and provide historical information with directions to nearby sites, and perhaps underwriting of shows like, and this was an interesting suggestion, History Detectives on PBS. PBS is very important to us, and if we were able to uh, link a program like this initiative with support for PBS, that would have a double benefit. Uh, the initiative is also a challenge to local communities like ours to work more collaboratively within themselves to prioritize themes and linkages into a cohesive message which can be more effectively promoted and developed. And that's a challenge that, that we certainly recognize we have to undertake. I think it's very exciting and an opportunity which we in the Southern Tier look forward to being a part of. I appreciate this opportunity, Governor.
here um, to tell you more about the Mohawk Valley, and hopefully you'll fall in love with it as much as our working group is in love with our region. Um, the Mohawk Valley shaped our state and nation. Due to its uh, natural geological landscape, it provided the only passageway through the Appalachian Mountains to the interior of North America between Georgia and the St. Lawrence. As a result of this very unique landscape, it influenced colonial wars, trade, agriculture, and the state and nation's economy. Most notably, and we've heard a lot about it today, the most, one of the most successful economic development projects happened in the Mohawk Valley. In Rome, New York in 1817, completed in 1825, and that's the Erie Canal. And still in full operation today, this magnificent engineering marvel and economic machine brought great prosperity to upstate New York. Boom towns popped up from Albany to Buffalo, from Albany, New York City, the main New York City, the seafloor capital of the world. New York State, the empire state, and helped make the U.S. a global economic power. Oops, I haven't been turning my stuff. <laughs> there we go. I'm so passionate about Mohawk Valley. There we go. Now, in the, the working group believes that, of course, not only as the other regions, we believe that the Mohawk Valley is probably one of the most historic, historically significant regions um, in New York State. And, you know, as I mentioned, there's so many um, historic milestones and events that happened in this region. And we identified um, numerous themes, and, and they're very similar to the other regions. And um, we do want to keep up the uniqueness of our region, and I'm wondering if there's, and I think our working group wonders how we can work with other regions and have some commonality with the themes throughout. So, um, as we all know, our cultural heritage traveler, this is a very specific region. Uh, they want sort of a unique experience of seeing what, so if we can find ways that we can make these themes connect, it would be great. Um, we also believe that, you know, hopefully through the Path of History Project, it will bring more awareness to the Mohawk Valley's unique and authentic natural and cultural historic resources. We identified 27 authentic sites. And what we think is so unique about these sites is that they not only tell about our New York history, but our American history. But also, they, def they tell the story of who we are as a people, our culture, our traditions, our trials, our tribulations, and our great successes. And just furthermore, I think as we move forward with the Path Through History project, it'd be great to also promote other uh, tourism opportunities in the region. You know, history is a wonderful, um, it entices, definitely entices the traveler, but including more of a richer experience, not only will educate the traveler about our history, but also make our New York residents more passionate about where they live. We know it'll create a great sense of place. And I want New Yorkers to feel just as passionate as we all do um, about our history. And so thank you. start by uh, reading the vision statement that our region came up with. Founded by waterways and crowned by mountains, the North Country region of New York State boasts a rich story of human occupation and settlement. The sense of place is molded by those who came to tame the wilderness, build industry, open farmlands, and capitalize on the water corridors. One discovers a unique testimony to the exceptionally important military role played on all of its borders. This rural region's heritage is deeply connected to a striking environment of landscapes and shorelines. From battles that saved the revolutionary effort and secured a struggling democracy, to resource extraction that revealed the industrial revolution, America happened here. And 
I think this project is such a wonderful follow-on to the work that's already been done at the Regional Council. Um, I mentioned that I was co-chairing the tourism group with the Regional Council, and two things made it to our plan, and I apologize to the Regional Council folks for paraphrasing those things related to tourism, but one has to do with activating tourism as a driver to build sustainable communities in our country. And this is essential to that mix of things we see that will sustain our communities. And the second one is elevating our reputation worldwide as a desirable place to live, work, and study. And again, this kind of effort is a key player to that. I think in the discussions we've had, uh, we're truly proud that we think we have an authentic culture in our country, someplace special, someplace unique. And what struck me personally is that in all the discussions, nobody said, pick me, my theme is most important. It was all about how can we work better together than we have in the past. And people are already proud of the efforts that they've done for state programs, such as the Byways program, uh, such as the Blue Way programs, and these programs have been around for decades. We already have those linkages that we've worked together on. And we welcome this as a way to strengthen those linkages and to pursue the themes that we've talked about and even further integrate heritage into our overall tourism mix, which is obviously integrated with what I just discussed. It's, it's, it's an environment, it's a shoreline, it, it's agritourism, it's all mixed together to create that culture. Thank 
nature and working landscapes and the scenic and natural environment combine to round out the region's diverse attractions. Um, intersecting all of the major themes in our region, we talk as a work group about themes of conflict and settlement and freedom and dignity. Uh, for example, the city of Troy is home to the first school dedicated to equal education for girls and the first all-female labor union. So not only did we tell some of the major stories of our town, but also um, some of the history and cultural stories as well. So I think the point that our work group tried to make, and we heard this morning from, and have heard from other groups, is it's really difficult to pick out the 15 top sites in our region. Our list was over 125 sites long of important things. So we would like to, um, or we hope that the Patrick History Initiative will really help us <coughs> tell our stories in a way that connects them so that we're not just identifying, identifying people, our places, but we're also telling the stories about the people in our region. And I think that's something we heard today. And all of the things that were brought up earlier today and also for our work group about ways to market our region and our state seem to be reflected in that video you showed this morning. So I think um, we are proud to be part of this initiative and it looks like it's going the right direction. Thank you. State history. Thank you to task force members for your leadership. Thank you to my committee members in the Hudson Valley for uh, prioritizing an immense list of sites in our region. Um, I think it's very appropriate the speaker word here. It follows the path to the Hudson River uh, from Lake Tierra de Clouds in the North Country down to New York Harbor. Uh, Dr. Jackson gave us a charge earlier on, and that was to be storytellers. So I'd like to use a quote from William Scheller's book about the Hudson River Valley. Um, it says, most American places do not feel haunted. They do not play upon the imagination in such a way as to produce near tangible impressions of ages and people long gone. The Hudson River Valley is a great exception to this American rule. The windows on its eras are nearly always open, so that despite whatever modern progress is made, its communities, it may never be difficult for a visitor to conjure up the faces and voices of the past. This is the river of, Frederick, of uh, Franklin Roosevelt, of Frederick Church of Benedict Arnold and gentleman Johnny Burgoyne. Washington Irving owns it still, and Henry Hudson forever sails up towards his hidden heart. That gives you a sense of the Hudson Valley, and by extension, it gives you a sense of what New York State history is. Our second job, as Dr. Jacks pointed out, was to be salesmen. And to sell New York State history, boy, do we have a fantastic product. Now, in the Hudson Valley, Newburgh's Washington's headquarters. The valley's scenery and the wild forests of the Catskill Mountains inspired the Hudson River School painters, who's, who helped mold a uniquely American appreciation for nature and the valley's strong environmental ethic. The Hudson River is lined with great estates of the Rockefellers, Livingstons, and Vanderbilts, and was a vital transportation artery that helped define the Empire State and grow our young nation. From Washington and Burgoyne to Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt to the young people whose gathering at Woodstock shaped their generation, the events, people, and places of the Mid-Hudson Valley region uh, not only define who we are as New Yorkers, but who we are as Americans. Again, we have an easy product to sell here. So some of the things that we wanted to consider in our process, again, here are some of the highlights first publicly owned historic site. Now, New York is the Empire State, but it's also the vanguard state, as far as I'm concerned. We have so many firsts in this state. First publicly owned uh, state historic site, uh, the first uh, school of painters, and so many other social and political movements that have their founding right here in New York State. For those who have ever been to the Hudson Valley or have traveled up the thruway or visited the Catskills, you know about the scenic wonders that we have in our region. Uh, again, the large list of sites that we had to narrow down points to the abundant natural and cultural historic resources that we have in our region. And the Hudson River basically led to 
along with the advent of the Erie Canal, the development of our great nation. So our process really in our group was thinking about connections. What connects our sites? Themes connect our sites. So what are the common themes? I think we're starting to see a pattern here in a lot of different locations around our state. And the themes are similar. So what connects our sites together horizontally, but what also connects our efforts vertically? How can we collaborate with uh, our sites, one another, and how can we also coordinate with the uh, New York State government in doing that? And that was part of our discussion uh, today uh, in our facilitated discussion that Dr. Lisa Keller uh, helped facilitate. And we really came up with some of the very concepts that have been mentioned by many of the other groups around the table today. Um, and these concepts include leveraging technology, and I was having a conversation with one of our, my colleagues, and we basically said if, if we had a dream, um, basically what you presented before in terms of the mobile app was that dream. A historic, uh, um, basically a historic dose that they can put in your pocket and take with you. Tremendous. Our sites need more resources, more resources to do better interpretation, to do better marketing. Our sites need to, to we need to collectively articulate as, as New Yorkers and as people in the Hudson Valley, what sets us apart as New, York, as New Yorkers, as New York State uh, residents, and uh, what sets New York State history apart from all the other places in our country. And we need to develop a better experience at the sites. And we need to develop a better experience virtually for people that want to visit those sites. These are the things that will help tell our story. Uh, and these are the things that we in the Mid-Hudson Valley are really enthusiastic of being a partner in with all of you and with the governor and with, with everyone else in this room. So thank you very much.
and each of we had borough chairs for each borough, and we were able to identify a kind of vision statement rather quickly, which was that we really needed to take this at the, the smallest possible level at first, and then build up, basically. And so we also felt that what was critical was the fact that this was a, this was a city that was marked from the beginning as an ever-changing, ever-renewing melting pot for diverse immigrant populations, as much back in the 1600s as today. Just the, the, the where people came from has changed. And that people have had to get used to a very heterogeneous community, living together, working together, and cultures over overrunning themselves all the time. That shows the change and the constant um, layering of community on top of other communities. For example, um, in New York City's largest Ch Chinatown, which today is located in Flushing, Queens, right in the dead center of that is the Free Synagogue of Flushing, this beautiful, magnificent structure. What's it doing there? Well, it is the tangible history that takes us back 50 years ago when that area of Queens was actively, was, was an active, um, reasonably cohesive Jewish community who then residents moved, and, and this is the story in New York City. There's always the neighborhoods going up, the neighborhoods going down. The, 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 uh, the Jews are moving from Harlem to Queens, and the blacks are moving from Lower Manhattan to Harlem, and, and we've got all kinds of groups that layer one on the other, but the stories are fabulous because they're, they're all, um, they're the, the ebb and flow of what the city is about. In terms of the heritage tourism, we realize that what's really important is at the local level collaborations. That it's uh, not simply good enough to have a wonderful little museum, but that you need not only something to do, to learn, or to inspire, but you also need a place to eat. You need a, a thing to buy to take home when you go. A place, if it, depending on where it's located, a place to sleep potentially. And, and the, real, the really important glue is the transportation, which gets you out of Midtown, out to all of these places throughout the city, and once there, how do you get around? So it's the linkages, it's the collaboration, it's the, the references of what was there and what's there now over time, and how do you get this to stand out as you're walking through the city of New York as a tourist in your own town sometimes, but also for the visitor coming in. So we identified several very practical things that we really needed. One, we need to work very closely with New York City Go, the, the CBD of the city, and as well as New York State, the I Love New York campaign, and we really need some metrics. Our, our uh, numbers are at the citywide level. There are going to be 50 million people walking into New York City next year, but we don't know how many are going to the Bronx or Brooklyn, and we need to get some of that going. We need to take advantage of the existing infrastructure that's out there, and that would include use of the business improvement districts, the community boards, um, the MTA, which not only has the infrastructure, the way to get you to all of these places, but the marketing potential that's enormous and that would make a huge difference for us. Um, sponsorships, I mean, you know, Apple's going after Samsung, but they're really going after Google. Well, Google is right in the middle of New York City and might be a very good sponsorship partner because all of this is going to take money if we're going to do right by it. So we need to look for financial support partners in all of this. And then I think the, the most important thing um, that we came up with oh, as what needs to go forward 
is we've got to take the social media to the limits. Now, as I look around this room, I suspect that most of us are the wrong side of the generational divide <laughs> for getting this stuff. I mean, I have a Facebook page, but I don't know what to do with it. And I, <laughs> and I don't believe in tweeting. I think that's <laughs> But perhaps we could enlist the governor's daughters, who are on the right side of the generational divide, to help us figure that out. As, I say, as we said in our work, in our session earlier today, we may not know how to do it, but there are folks out there who do under the age of 30, I suspect. And, and we should be not only dealing with the mobile app, which is critical, but even, and, and I don't know what it means, but it, it has to engage with things like Foursquare, which is the GPS location-based um, site that could connect up all of the resources and assets in one particular community. Something, you look at what Square is doing with Starbucks in terms of recognition of a customer walking in the door simply by their carrying a smartphone. We, we need to get some of the younger experts in here to really take a look at not what's out there right now, but make ourselves the cutting edge in terms of this country. As the governor said, one in 13 jobs is engaged in tourism. And the hottest area of that is heritage and cultural tourism. So to grow that 8% of our workforce, we really, really need to get on this bad bandwagon as quickly and as aggressively as we possibly can. Thank you. Includes 
the IMX Theater Interactive Display Simulations Authentic Airplanes and Spacecraft. Next, we have Montauk Point Lighthouse, which is the oldest lighthouse in New York State. And it was authorized by the Second Congress under President George Washington in 1792. In recognition of the important role the lighthouse played in American maritime history, it was recently designated a National Historic Landmark. Not content to rest on such august historic laurels, the Montauk Point Lighthouse continues to serve as a vital aid to navigation today. Sagamore Hill, known as the Summer White House of President Theodore Roosevelt, the beloved 26th President, Nobel laureate and noted conservationist, had an impact on the national park system in America extending well beyond his term in office. This national historic site includes Theodore Roosevelt's home, grounds, an interpretive museum, and bookshop, and a nearby cemetery serves as the president's final resting place. And finally, Old Westbury Gardens. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, Old Westbury Gardens is a magnificent representation of America's Gilded Age and of Long Island's famed Gold Coast. The former home of John S. Phipps and his wife, Margarita Grace Phipps, it was completed in 1906 and includes 200 acres of formal gardens, landscaped grounds, woodlands, ponds, and lakes. I would like to say that um, after that, is I'm really excited to see the presentation that was set forth today. Um, I'm very visual, so seeing the website and uh, the work that you've done, I think, is fantastic. It's it's um, easy to see where you're going with it, and uh, the signs are wonderful as well. We've been really meeting the last few months, but seeing it up there really makes a difference. And um, I think creating a forum for the rest of us that we can work with is really uh, key, uh, because I've, you know the work that I've done in Long Island, and, and along with the others that, I, that are on Long Island and everyone else here, trying to get everyone together cohesively and to cooperate is not easy, and it really does take the government locally and on the state level to make things happen in a bigger way. So, um, so I am really excited about that, to be able to be a part of that initiative as well. Thank you. It's really striking uh, a number of things. The richness of New York's cultural and historic heritage, uh, which you know coming into the discussion, but when you see it all in one place, uh, it's really quite astounding. The diversity, uh, and almost everyone talked about the diversity across the state of, uh, of our history and cultural, uh, cultural heritage, uh, but also the commonality, the similarities even across the state, across the regions, and across times. Uh, there was one other common theme that I heard today, which was the need for resources to help take these ideas that have been generated from you, from the work groups that you've done, and you've seen some of what the state is beginning to do with the website and the signs we talked about earlier. The governor wants to extend that commitment today, and today is announcing a $1 million award for promoting and marketing this effort in your community to be determined, to be spent to move your plans forward. It's a $100,000 jumpstart grant for a region. The governor announced that today. I want to thank him for that. the man who is blazing a path through history in New York, the governor of the state of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. I knew if I stayed long enough, I'd eventually be introduced. The, uh, I didn't introduce before, and I'm, I'm sure they were recognized earlier, but Senator Betty Little is with us in the North Country, and we thank her very much. And Assemblyman Jack McEnany from the Capital District Region, who also uh, almost single-handedly uh, kept this capital uh, alive as a place of great history, uh, and as a, as a destination location, and uh, his sense of history, his love for this building has inspired many of us. Jack McEnany.
Well, this was great. All the presentations were great, and the, the speakers, I've heard reports, everybody was impressed with uh, Professor Jackson and Harold Holzer. Uh, and I think this is, uh, it's a work in progress, it's a beginning. I think um, the putting the network together, one of the main roles we can fill is as a convener and a place that brings people together, forging a network among you, because there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of knowledge. Forging a synergy, creating a synergy among the regions, because you're right, there's a lot of cross-fertilization that can happen here, a lot of lessons to be shared. Also, there has to be a seamlessness among these regions, because no one is going to go to one region, maybe locally, but we want to have a, a cohesive, seamless uh, story as we go through the entire state. So, keeping it together. Um, Holly, you're right about the, the technology. I'm going to use my two special consultants. Uh, because in, in many ways, the challenge here is to use the technologies of the future to illuminate the lessons of the past. And that, that's part of what is being done here. Uh, so I'm excited about all of that. Uh, why was this one of the first things we were working on 19 months ago when we had so much that was going on? Because we're working on a lot of different levels in state government. In the past 19 months, uh, I hope you see some activity on different levels. We're working to get the economy going. People mentioned the regional economic development councils. We started regional economic development councils to come up with regional economic <coughs> plans. So we have an economic development level. We're trying to reinvigorate the SUNY system, a great jewel for the state of New York, the state university system, uh, and we're trying to accelerate the redevelopment of the SUNY system. We're trying to make government work on the executive. We're trying to break gridlock and work better with the legislature. And all of these initiatives are ongoing, and they're layered, different levels. But, and Dr. Jackson is so good at this, we communicate in stories. That's how we communicated information. There has to be a narrative. There has to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. There has to be a context. That's how we communicate. And the story that we're communicating is the story that you're putting together today. Remember who you are, New York. Remember what made you great. Remember what you've achieved and what you've done. Because what we have done and what made us great is what is going to make us great again. Or our economic development plans. Or what we did. We're a center of commerce. We made the marriage with academia and higher education. And that made New York one of the greatest economies in the country. And we're working to do that again. Our diversity made us a place of social acceptance which led us to a very progressive political state. And that is where we are today. And we do have challenges. And we do have issues. And we do have questions. And we have been at stronger places in this country uh, at different times. It's important to remember, this is a special state. And we are special for living here. And it is the greatest state in the country. It was the laboratory of American democracy. It was the laboratory of American finance. It was the laboratory of innovation. And all the elements are still here to make it the greatest laboratory again. That's the story that you're telling. And it needs to be told. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, if you make your way to the lobby, the instructions to get there. Good. Well, sir.